I want to take a few minutes this morning and I want to take a look at vectors. Vector. Vector! Okay, are you going to tell us what a vector is? It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Perfect. A vector is a mathematical quantity. Now, in physics, everything that we deal with fits into one of two categories. It's either a vector, or it's what we call a scalar. And I don't even know if I spell scalar right. Sometimes I use this in A. I really don't know. I spell it both ways. A vector has two pieces of information, while a scalar only has one. The scalar is simply a magnitude, meaning it's the how much. Something like mass, 5 kilograms, is a magnitude. Time, 3 seconds, is just a magnitude. A vector, as we were told, has magnitude. That's the how much. But it also has a direction associated with it. For example, a force is a vector. When you apply a force to something, you push it. Well, you push it with a certain amount of energy, or that's not... You push it with a certain amount of strength, and so there's an amount. You can push two things with two different amounts. And then there's a direction. Are you going to push it up, down, left, right, whatever? Here's our vector. And and so when we're the thing with vectors and what you got to keep in mind is we can add up two scalars real easily. Five kilograms plus two kilograms is seven kilograms. That's it. End of story. To add up two forces, it's more than just adding up the numbers. We also have to take into consideration the direction. And that's what we're going to take a look at. I have three vectors drawn up here, A, B, and C. And I want to talk about how we add them up. And to visualize this, um, graphically, we're going to go to this other app um, that I have. This simulation is from the FET website, P-H-E-T. Um, they have a lot of neat simulations to help you see things. And, and this is one of their vector ones, and it's an older one. It's been updated. Um, but this is what you're basically looking at. We've got my three vectors. This is what I had as A. This was what I called vector B. And this is what I call vector C. And when we add them, we literally line them up um, head to tail. In other words, where A ends, B begins. Where B ends, C begins. And then we close the loop, the close the connection from the beginning to end with an arrow, and that's our vector sum. Now, the neat thing is, I don't. I could add A to B to C. I can add C to B to A, and we get the same answer. The order that we add the vectors doesn't matter we end up at the same place so that's kind of neat but it's really important that we place them head to tail an interesting thing is that it doesn't matter the order that I add up these vectors we get the same answer so that's kind of so that's kind of nice so given some graph paper and some vectors you should be able to add them up graphically or maybe have one subtract the other graphically. So that's the first method that you need to be familiar with. The second method is what we call adding or subtracting, it doesn't matter, by component. Now, let's say this is my this is my vector. And I'm just going to call it vector A. Think of this placed on an XY grid. So that's X. This is Y. What we're going to do, when we add up a couple of vectors by component, what we need to do 
is take this vector and express it in terms of how much in the x direction is it and how much in the y direction is it. In other words, how much in this is the amount of A in the x direction. This little arrow is the amount of A in the y direction. We have a right triangle. If we know this angle, and I'm going to call that theta, so we know that part of the triangle, our hypotenuse, we know the angle, we can figure out the other two sides. And these two pieces of information are typically given to you as part of these vector problems. And so to calculate um, the, the component in the x direction, and I'm just going to, I'm not going to write it as ax, I'm just going to write it as x, what we know is that the cosine of this angle, cosine is adjacent, my x side over my hypotenuse, A. The length of my vector is the hypotenuse. And then we solve for x. x is equal to A times cosine theta. My y side is the sine side. And so the length of my y side is equal to A sine theta. And what we're doing is we're going to take this vector, break it up into two vectors. We're going to break it up the vector in the x direction, and we're going to break it up into the vector in the y direction. And then we add up all our x's and all our y's if we have multiple vectors. Let me show you that in another app. Keep in mind, I, I drew this vector very nice. If I have a vector pointing like this, B, the component in the x direction is negative because I'm pointing in the negative x direction. And my component in the y is positive because it's pointing up. So we have to take into account the direction of our, what's called our component vectors. My vector in the x direction, my little component in the y direction, am I in the positive or am I in the negative direction? Um, and, and so um, let's look at let's look at that app and I'm going to go through a couple of examples to try to illustrate how to break it up by component. And then I'm going to work a problem on on um, on the smart board to kind of illustrate So I hope you can read this. It's pretty sloppy. But I have three vectors. I have this vector, which has a length of 10, and it's at an angle of 30 degrees. I have this vector, which is a length of 12, at an angle of 70 degrees. And I squeezed in this vector, and that's kind of hard to see. It's starting to get sloppy. That has, an ang that has a length of 8, and an angle of 10 degrees. And what I want to do is I want to kind of go through a problem where we are working um, and adding these vectors up by components. Let me clean up my board a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to call, I'm going to call, um, I'm just going to have a table and I'm going to say vector um, x and y. And so I'm just going to make up an xy table. And I'm going to take each vector. I have my vector of length 10. And I'm going to break it up in terms of how much is in the x, how much is in the y. Now I'm going to skip some of the math. I will write out the equation, but how I got it all, you have to make sure you understand. But my x component of vector 10, and I will draw this one out, looks like that. That's my side adjacent to the angle. That's my cosine side. And so vector 10 in the x direction has a length of 10 times cosine 30. The nice thing is I know in pretty much all our problems um, in, in this class will be 
cosine is in the x direction, so y is 10 sine 30. So vector 12 um, and vector 8. Pause the video, see if you can finish it. So what I get from vector 12 is um, I get 12 uh, cosine 70 and I get 12 sine 70. But what you got to be careful about is that this x component is pointing in a negative direction. That's a negative direction. So I need to put a negative sign there. Do number, do, do, do vector 8. Eight cosine ten and negative eight sine ten. I got the negative sign because it's going downward a little bit. And and this is where you have to be careful. Is it pointing in the positive x direction? Is it pointing in the negative x direction? Is it pointing in the pos upward in the positive y? Or is it pointing downward in the negative y? And that's going to tell you how to do all the negative signs. So the next thing, you do the math. And then we add them all up. And so you plug this into the calculator, add it to this, plus this, and you get some number. Do the same thing for the y. Now, I'm going to go and do the math real quick. Uh, while I go get my calculator and get the answers, you work it. So that's what I got. When I added up all my x's, um, subtracted that term, um, I got 12.4. When I added up my y's, I got 14.9. What this is telling me is that my resultant vector this is my resultant vector. It's going to go 12.4 in the positive x direction, 14.9 in the positive y. In other words, if I drew an xy table down here, 12.4 is going to be right there. 14.9 is going to be right there. This is my resultant vector. To get the length of that, we use Pythagorean theorem. And so um, my result, and I'm going to call that r, is equal to 12.4 squared plus 14.9 squared. And we take the square root, and I get, I get a length of 19.4. So that's our magnitude, 19.4. I'm going to write it over here, and I apologize for it getting sloppy. That's a 4, by the way. We also need this angle. We can do that using Sokotoa. I have all three sides of my triangle. I know this side is 12.4. I know this side is 14.9. I know my hypotenuse is 19.4. So you do it. I'm not going to work this one out. You work it out, and the angle you should get is, you should get this angle of 50 degrees. And that's what, I'm not going to show you how to do that, you should be able to do that. So work it out, get 50 degrees, make sure you understand how to do it. That's adding up vectors. And it takes some practice, and I've got some worksheets to help you practice, but this tries to explain it all. Alright, if you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.